I'm not dead. That sounds like something interesting. So there's a guy I want to tell you about, and he's uh, my barber. And come to find out, he is also the inspiration for an organization in town that's trying to help people who are addicted to drugs, but specifically methamphetamine. Um, his interview was so impacting on us when we heard it that I just, um, I really feel like I want to share some of it with you now. So my name is Justin Arbogast, and I'm a recovering meth addict. It was crazy. You know, I would do uh, anything and everything to get get my next, you know, to have my next fix, to have my next, you know, to get high or whatever it might be. Um, living on couches from place to place, you know, people, you know, I would fall asleep wherever I was, whenever I was tired after being up for days, I would just crash out here, crash out there. And then if I didn't have money, I would go steal things to, you know, I mean, I was on the grind, you know, pretty much. Um, it was horrible. It was. It wasn't good. It wasn't the life that I would suggest anybody to have, or or, or wish on anybody. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It's just not. Um, it's not life. You know. I think many things changed. You know. I. I you know. I'm an only child, and growing up, uh, I was really close to my family, and pretty much that just started going away to where I yeah you don't want to be around the ones that you love when you're high and um, because you don't want them to see you how you are like just you know and you feel guilty and you, you just at least for me that's that's how I felt and I knew if I went around them they would know that something was going on it's the devil meth is the devil it's definitely evil it's horrible it's it's it, it terrorizes everything in your life. I mean, it's uh, it's the worst drug you could possibly do, I believe, in my eyes. I don't think people understand how much on a daily on a daily occurrence of how it crosses my mind at least at least every day and how serious that is because it could only take that much to set me off to want to go use again. I could be 10 years down the road and find myself having troubles if I don't, if I don't follow a, a strong enough program. That's how addictive this drug is and uh, there's, I just don't think people, people that don't do the drug or have not ever done the drug, they don't understand that. And they never will, you know, until you have experienced what I've experienced or what these other people have experienced, you just don't know. So take it from what I'm telling you to, I mean, it's, every day is a struggle, you know. Life ain't easy, so that's, it, it just makes it that much tougher. You definitely need the support. If you don't have support, then that's the problem with, with, with society today. And I feel for a lot of these people. A lot of these people that go in and out of jail all the time and stuff, they don't have families. I had, I, you know, I don't even know how to, to start when some of these people, they go home and their parents are doing dope and, and they're getting high. Well, of course they don't have support. They're never gonna get clean if they don't have the support to get clean. I had all that support and everything and I still chose not to do, you know, the right thing until finally it clicked in, you know. But I just feel for a lot of these people, you know, that don't have the support, don't have clean and sober places to go, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's just, I feel for a lot of people because they don't have families and you know friends and that's why they keep going in and out of prison and jail and doing the same stuff. They don't, you know, I, I, th I, I don't. I don't think that society takes it near seriously, uh, seriously enough, you know, because we just let 
justice or whatever, you know, just going in and out of jail. Well, yeah, people that have addiction problems do their crime, do their thing. They get caught up, they go into jail. Two or three days later, we all know it, they get kicked out unless it's like something serious, like an assault charge or something, which it's usually not. It's always property crimes with the drug addicts. So they are out in a couple days. Justice is never really served, you know? It's just, it's, it's really crappy. This, this whole system is crappy, and that's another reason why my mom is trying to get this program going, you know? Is because she wants to be able to set up a program to where people can go into jail and then they offer that, that to them. So if they really do want to change and they really are tired with their lives, they can come out of there and they can go straight to my mom's program or whatever program it might be and get some help. But they don't really have, they don't really have that, you know? They just kick people out the door and then of course, they don't have any place to go or they don't have family to support them, so then they go get high again. It's not a shocker to me. That's just what happens. Get a piece of this whole town You know you can't frame everything you see And it feels good To know your life and understood Even when you say things you don't mean I mean take home a piece of Most of us care a lot more about what we actually put into our bodies and after a good sports workout, one of those sports drinks isn't always the best. In fact, science shows the best thing you can do to help your muscles recover is chocolate milk. You want three carbs to one protein and chocolate milk is perfect and there's nothing better than lock meat chocolate milk. It's not the alarm that gets you out on the trail every day, it's your heart whispering, get out of bed, this is your day. Your legs are tired. Your body begs you not to do it. But going back is not an option. This race is against your toughest opponent. This race is against you. You give it your all and will be back tomorrow to do it all over again. And when you finish, because you're never really done, only one thing can restore what was taken and what you gave. Lock Mead reduced fat or non-fat chocolate milk. Recovery doesn't get any better than this. And today in the soapbox, we haven't done one of these for a while. I guess I haven't been as irritated as usual, but I've got something to talk about. I'm growing intolerant of intolerance. I find it on the left. I find it on the right. I find it right down the middle. In pop culture, in regular culture, I even find it in my faith. And of course, we find it in politics. If I have an opinion that doesn't quite line up with a certain group of people or popular opinion, then all of a sudden, I'm labeled as intolerant. Now wait a second. The fact that you would label me intolerant would almost make you intolerant of other opinions. What happened to the Oregon where we like divergent opinions, where we like people who think differently, where they didn't have to always agree with us for us to elect them or respect them. Instead, now we make them out to be the villain and we try to destroy them because they think differently than we do. I think that might be the definition of intolerance. And joining us is Peggy Whalen, the Executive Director of Women's Space. 
and we got a party coming up. This is the big fundraiser of the year for Women's Space, and you guys are going all out with oh, this yeah. one. Tell me about it. Oh, Rick, we're so excited. It is our third annual black and white gala. We're having a um, Paris theme, Magique Paris. Ooh. I know. We're going to have five. It's going to be so black fancy. And white. It's black and white. It's fancy. We're having it at Emerald Golf and Resort in Cresswell. Which is, re they remodeled and it's absolutely phenomenally it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. We're having um, Shelly James and the Agents of Unity oh, nice. playing music for us. And they, um, they're members of Satin Love Orchestra. So they all come together and they're going to be playing music so we can all have a great time later. So it's a dinner. It's an auction. What are this most beautiful platinum ring with diamonds and this beautiful purple sapphire from Baudet jewelry that they donated for us um, we've got dinners and oh we've got stuff for the country music festival both of them by oh, mark nice. gave us tickets to both um, so it is friday night um May 9th, so it's Mother's Day weekend, and we will be celebrating our mothers that night. So. And so they need to go to Women's Space website yes. for more information, and I'll put that on the screen. One more thing, this is so important because this really is how you fund the organization yeah, that does so much in our community to end the violence. Yes, it's our major fundraiser of the year, and it's a lot of fun, so come out, support us. Recently, we interviewed a young man named Joe Boosley and his mother for a video we produced for Women's Space. You're looking at the video right there on your screen. Job is the featured speaker at the big Women's Space Gala on May the 9th. He's also an up-and-coming singer-songwriter. So we went to Women's Space and said, we've got an idea. Let's introduce Job to the community, let him sing some of his music, talk about how he writes it, and you guys sponsor it. And of course, Women's Space said, you bet. So. Here's Joe Boosley. Well caught up in. Yeah, I think we're yeah. How long should I wait? Most of most of the music is um the, the words, everything, it, it's internal that I don't really tell people about. I, I like when people, um, you know, when people interact with the song and they, and they can feel, you know, the song. How many more songs do I need to write? The more you do, the more experiences you have, the more you, you can write. I mean, that's why, that's why straight being a musician and, and uh, not interacting, I mean, just nothing but your, your music or your work, it, it's, it becomes, becomes unhealthy for me. And, and I tend, I find myself doing that. I'll, I'll take a couple months and I'll do nothing but record. And then I find myself not being able to find anything to write about because I'm not interacting. I'm not having the interactions with people and the stuff that, that gives you something to write about. How many more dreams should I dream of you? And I've always waited for the day that I need. Spot you from my away. It's that voice that tells you when you get home what you should have said. You know, be it, you know, you're upset about something or you're, you know, you really want to tell that person how much you care, but you don't know how to do it. Um, you go home and you write it and you don't, you don't even realize it, I guess, until, until later. I can't change, I can't change my fate. Well, I saw you just the other day. Imagine that. I think what I, what I want the most out of music, really, is um, just, I guess, just to play, just to be able to be, be able to fill a room with people that are 
willing to listen. You look to me and I just stare at you like deja vu. That, that's, my, that's my biggest thing. I think, uh, you know, when people, when I'm connecting with, with hundreds of people rather than three or four, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. I think that would be, that would be my ultimate goal. Wouldn't that be great? We have a really cool bike ride we want to tell you about. The Oregon Supported Living Program is sponsoring the bike ride. And this is my wife, Kathy Dancer. Um, she serves on the board of OSLP. And also, you've been going on, I mean, all these trips to try to figure out how this bike ride ro rolls, right? Yes, we kind of added a new one this year. And so we went and checked it out. And it is quite the challenge. There's a 60K and a 40K and then the 100K and the 100K plus. So the 100K plus, this is for you people who really think that you're like an amazing sporter and you really want to take on a challenge. Because I think it climbs about 2,000 feet and then it's like just a straight downhill. It's really grueling uphill that just keeps going and going and going. And then once you get uphill, it's awesome. But then the downhill is really challenging too because it's so yeah. straight. And it's a fully supported ride, which means that there are many rest stops along the way that have, you know, food to help you fuel back up again and, you know, beverages, things to drink, uh, water. And then um, when you get back to the park, we have a uh, Coburg Pizza is going to provide pizza. We're going to have beer, pop, and just have a nice little celebration together. And that's where? At Armitage? At Armitage Park, yeah. So where does the money go? Oregon Supported Living Program, which is an agency that serves um, adults with disabilities um, locally, Eugene Springfield. So why are you involved in this whole thing? My brother um, Chip lives in a group home um, in Sandy Drive and just they are an amazing agency who just really have such a heart and love for their, their client. Well, it's amazing how it's changed his life since moving here um, and being a part of this agency now. He has just his quality of life and he just has a wonderful life. He has a home that he calls his own and it's fun to just see him out in the community enjoying, um, you know, shopping and, you know, eating and just seeing him out there and he's, his life has completely changed. Um, we're doing this, but which, so which one are we doing? We're doing the 100 plus. See why I work out so much? So let's take a look at Oregon Supported Living Program and how it's changing not just arts and culture in our community, but also the workforce. The OSLP Arts and Culture Program is a groundbreaking, inclusive, and multidisciplinary arts program what are you working on? that is accessible to all people. So you're helping us with the community canvas for Saturday's event? Yeah. Everybody's an important part of culture and everybody has a story to tell, everybody has something to express and this program gives that opportunity for everybody. Expression is something that connects us to other people and our program is stretching not only the imagination of those we support, That's a good spin, Harry. but the arts community in general. The arts provide a universal language that can bridge the gap caused by differences. And Oregon Supported Living Program provides a variety of art programs, including music, painting, and dance. That's the great thing of us doing performances, of us having a gallery, is people who maybe had preconceived notions come into this space and are so touched by the artwork they see, so impressed by it. And I do like the kitchen. I know to do outside too. Our newest commitment to inclusion in supporting our clients is through our community inclusion and employment program. And Akasi do a lot of stuff for me. 
get like a bonus check or them other ones, like I get a check every week. OSLP helps our clients find paid employment that's meaningful to them. But it's not just about our clients. What we find is businesses that hire the people we support get as much or even more out of the relationship. Partnerships we're developing with local businesses is about first educating them on what we have to offer. And that's people who are awesome, who have skills, who are readily available to work. Rick cleans and picks up around the tasting room and the Ninkasi Brewery, something other staff used to take time out of their already busy schedules to do. He's mainly um, just kind of infrastructural support for the team, so the things that, you know, uh, aren't necessarily the most critical, but are critical for the customer experience he's able to take on. OSLP will help identify jobs or tasks that our folks can do, and people like Rick have a support person with them at all times. You ready? He's sort of self-managing in that way. I mean, he has an attendant there to sort of help him with stuff, but, uh, you know, in reality, he's completely self-motivated. People knows I do a good job for him. And I want to do like good job for a lot of stuff. They are opening doors to people who've never had this opportunity before. They're setting a great example for other employers. And in their community, they're also getting their name out there in a very positive manner. It's, it's great marketing and great PR. And I think it's just important for people to keep that in mind as they're out there thinking about whether this may or may not work for them, to know that not only is it probably going to work for you, but you're probably going to get a lot more out of it than you're expecting. Oh, you got one right there. We're really all about enhancing people's lives in whatever way that means to them. Our goal is to help people feel good about themselves, feel included, have meaning in their life. I'm real happy. I'm like doing like hard work and people think I'm doing like a good job of it. I can do this job and everything else. I belong here. Intro it, oh, please. Right now? Yeah. Ah, uh, this is usually where I would announce the winner for the Ranchito Grill drawing. Uh, but Rick and Will drop by there unannounced, uninvited, you could say, because Rick isn't usually invited to things, so that's how he does it. Anyway, they drop by, A did the drawing, check it out. So as Emma said, we just showed up over at Ranchito Grill off Mohawk near the McDonald's on Springfield and uh, talked to Abe and said, hey, we need to do the drawing. Every month, Abe, in conjunction with Rick Dancer TV, gives away two dinners, two drinks for free to somebody who just looks at the Rick Dancer TV sign, fills out the paperwork, and the rest is up to you. Well, we did have some audio difficulties, and I know in the television world, you're not supposed to tell people when you make a mistake, but this is Rick Dancer TV. We got to tell you. We got to fess up. But here's the drawing anyway. Okay. We've never done this kind of sort of like live. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. It's Cheryl Schultz wallpapering and painting. So we, we've got to get our name out. We've got to get people knowing who we need a promo. I think we need to come up with a concept. Ooh, let's work it out. Let's uh let's get some ideas down. Okay, so what do you think? Um, well, we're local. Everything local. Like local, local, like local everything. Okay, okay. I live here. I live here. Okay, there's local. I own Rick Dancer TV. Locally owned. There it is. Oh my God. It's working. So, so I'll teach you how to do the head bobs. Who are the dramatic turns? We all march to a different drummer, and what you think is weird, I may think is normal and vice versa. None of that really matters, but I can tell you one thing. I'm gonna show you something right now that makes anything you see out here look absolutely sane. Watch this workout called Insanity.
So if you're in the market for a video, Rick Dancer Media Services, we create long format videos, shorter videos, YouTube videos, website videos. What we specialize in is telling your story. And we do it with heart, we do it with passion. Sometimes we do it and make it just a little wacky. It's whatever you want. But give us a call to find out more about our services and what we offer. My phone number is right here on the screen, 541-232-3143, or go to rickdancer.com or rickdancertv. What I love about coming to Saturday Market is its community. You run into people that you haven't seen for a long time. And this morning I ran into an old friend named Alan Beck. He used to be my news director at KEZI. Just in having that conversation, he reminded me of why I'm doing what I'm doing today. We have to have people in our lives that do that for us once in a while. When I was in the television industry, we always tried to find stories that would attract you to come. Now what we're doing here is we're just doing what we think is the right thing and you're just choosing to come along with us. And I love that, and I needed to be reminded about that, and I need a community of people around me in order to do that. So that's what this is all about. Where's this gonna end up? We don't know, but we're really glad you're along for the ride, so hold on, because I don't know where this is going. about other people's ways can we look in the mirror and all see the 